USS Slater. My name is Shanna Schuster and I am the Visitor Engagement and Program Manager here at the Destroyer Escort Historical Museum in Albany, New York. We are so excited to be working with the Buffalo Naval Park on this comparison video. I'm Shane Stevenson, Curator and Director of Museum Collections here at the Buffalo Naval Park. And today we're bringing you a pretty cool comparison video of the pilot houses and navigation bridges on our two ships. When we're talking about navigation decks on a destroyer escort, it all starts in the pilot house. The pilot house, of course, is in charge of steering the ship. The helmsman, who stands at the helm right here, is in charge of keeping the ship on course. He will use a gyro repeating compass, and if for whatever reason that fails, he'll go to the magnetic compass. His job is to keep the ship on course, but if you're looking out these windows here, it sure is difficult to see. So he's actually not in charge of steering um, and choosing the direction on his own. The officer of the deck, or the captain, is above us on the flying bridge, and they will issue orders to us through this talking tube. That way, the helmsman just does exactly what he's ordered. As Shanna says, it all starts at the helm. So this is the helm of the USS Little Rock, uh, she would be engaged by a uh, helmsman, more than likely a quartermaster. And then you'll see at the station, we don't really have that. We do have a wraparound bridge, which I'll show you in a little bit, that does have the gyro compass on it. All right, but right in this immediate station, we don't have the uh, gyro compass or a magnetic compass as you see on the USS Slater. We do have an engine order telegraph here and here, that would have been managed by uh, a Lee helmsman. All right? And the various stations and portals would have been managed by uh, lookouts. The helmsman, Lee helmsman, and uh, lookouts would have been uh, managed by the bosun mate of the watch. All right? And then above that was the officer of the deck that uh, Shanna mentions. And as you can see here, leading out not to our flying bridge, but to our observation deck, our, uh, the, the talking tubes, or the voice pipes, which led down from the observation deck, and as you can see, right into the ear of the helmsman. The lead helmsman is in charge of communicating with the engine room. When he receives an order from the captain or the officer of the deck to change the engine speed, he'll come to the engine order telegraph. He'll move this lever, indicating what speed he'd like to go, and he'll push this button. The button rings a bell down in the engine room. They'll see that the order changed, move their lever to match ours, ring the bell, which will ring up here, and we'll know that they got the message. He can also communicate using revolutions per minute. Same mechanism, uh, the Lee helmsman, uh, you know, will send the orders down from the OOD, the officer of the deck, or the captain. They ring the bell, signaling to the engine uh, room that there's an order coming down, and it's returned along with the bell. You can also send an order by the uh, revolutions uh, for the shaft. All right, and here is this mechanism here. They turn the dial clockwise, which will list the revolutions of, of the shaft. The helmsman will also keep his eye on the clinometer. This tells us how far the ship is tilting one way or the other. It'll also give us a pretty good clue as to how seasick the rest of the crew is. We know that the helmsman can't see out these windows in order to steer the ship. In fact, if we're at general quarters or battle stations, all of these ports will get shut for the safety of our crew. Now, Shanna, right about here, you, you talk about the clinometer, all right, which is the degree of listing either to starboard or port, uh, and certainly it can make people seasick even at a four-degree uh, list on either side. You, know, you can get a little queasy. All right, we actually uh, do not have our clinometer here. Um, 
This is probably a good time to mention that USS Little Rock was uh, decommissioned in 1976, and there were three or four times since her decommissioning that the Navy had come to the Buffalo Naval Park and cannibalized a lot of our um, equipment and gauges to use on other uh, Navy vessels. So I'm thinking that the Slater was probably a better preserved uh, vessel when she came back from Greece, and uh, that is not the case with the USS Little Rock. So there will be some areas that we talk, that you cover, uh, that we won't be able to cover uh, because of that cannibalization. All right, and having a clinometer right here is uh, one of them. But I would like to point out, if you can see, we do have two tachometers. All right, so we have a total of four tachometers, all right, which measure the speed of each of our shafts, all right, and the revolutions of our shafts. And so that is a way of gauging uh, the four propeller shafts of uh, her speed. Behind us on the bulkhead are control panels for the navigational and fighting lights. On our recent dry docking, the fighting lights were installed on the mast, and this control panel was installed when we returned. There is also a lot of communication com equipment in the compartment. Sound-powered phones, speakers, and talking tubes. Well, this is the USS Little Rock's uh, running signal and anchor light uh, panel. So from the aft bulkhead on the pilot house, all of the running lights, daytime, nighttime, uh, signal, anchor lights, depending on the time of day, and what condition uh, the ship was in was all managed from these control panels and control boxes. And I'm going to show you the 1MC panel. So here is the 1MC control panel box. All right, when these knobs were flipped, it would go everywhere on the ship, and theoretically, every single sailor, no matter where they were, on the 08, 09 level, or down on the 04 level in the engine room, uh, would be able to hear these general announcements. So we do have crew aft button, officers button, crew forward button. All right, and so this would set uh, general announcements and uh, condition for the ship uh, for the day. Furthest aft on the flying bridge is the Mark 52 Director Control Station, which houses the radar equipment and supported the Mark 52 Gun Director, which controlled all three 3-inch three 50 guns aboard Slater. Fourteen men manned the bridge and the pilot house during normal conditions during World War II. I made my way to the flying bridge, a deck above the pilot house. Slater's World War II flying bridge had no overhead which provided an unobstructed view of the sky during air attacks, as well as the horizon, which was beneficial for convoy maneuvers. From the flying bridge, the captain controlled the ship. He could issue orders down to the pilot house, engine rooms, and gun control stations. He would be sitting in this chair, or one directly across on the starboard side, out in the elements, just like the North Atlantic cold today, or the heat of the South Pacific. These are the lookout stations. The aft stations are responsible for keeping air lookout, whereas the forward two are sea lookouts. There's a set of two on each side of the ship, port, and starboard. Each lookout would be equipped with binoculars, bearing dial, and elevation indicator. The most forward compartment on the flying bridge is the sound hut. In this compartment, we'll find sonar equipment, tactical range recorders, and an attack plotter. This space is not restored on the Slater. Maybe someday. All right, so there we were looking uh, dead center line of the ship uh, from the wraparound bridge. And that's where I'm standing in now. So behind me on my right shoulder are the portals leading to the pilot house. And as Shanna mentioned, these would be closed during uh, general quarters or battle stations. All right, with the USS Little Rock, she does have a wraparound bridge. Uh, also for lookouts, 
give you a much better view of the horizon and uh, the sea. Um, and over here would be, you had mentioned about the gyro compass. Uh, we do have ours out here on the uh, wraparound bridge. And we have a lot of other communications that would be also used for the rest of the ship. And again, you can see the cannibalization of our vessel. Wires are cut. All right, we do have a radar station out here on the wraparound bridge as well. All right, so transmitting all of that data that comes back to our various radars, uh, taking the radio waves and turning it into electrical pulses, and then being able to read those. Here's a rudder angle degree gauge, port starboard, again, uh, the degree at the rudder, and a chart table. Now this is where also where the captain would sit. So he had a chair like this on the port and starboard of the wraparound bridge. He would actually be able to have eyes on the situation. Now as Shanna had mentioned, uh, with the USS Slater, the flying bridge is right on the overhead of the pilot house. Well here at the USS Little Rock, our flying bridges are adjacent to the pilot house on the same level uh, on the port and starboard side. So here I am on a port side flying bridge. Right, we do have a rudder angle indicator here that says what angle the rudder is uh, at, uh, starboard or port. We have a Polaris uh, compass, right, which was kind of a, a dummy compass, right, which only really gave relative bearing, which is bearing relative to another object which could be seen and measured. Right? Unlike uh, a true north compass or an absolute bearing, this was a relative bearing. It was just a relative bearing relative to other objects that are seen from the flying bridge. Also have a talking uh, tube or a voice pipe, which led directly into the pilot house as well. So this is where the captain would be if he wasn't on the wraparound bridge he could be here, again, keeping eyes on a situation. So now we're on the observation platform, and this is on the overhead of the pilot house. And this is where, again, more lookouts can be. They'd have forward lookouts uh, and aft lookouts. Uh, and we also had some tubs uh, for searchlights and big eyes or uh, binoculars uh, to be looking out. Right there and there. And also behind me, there we have uh, a compass. So that was taken from the USS Springfield. And when you're here, you could even add a quarter <laughs> and uh, check the views of Canada for yourself. Part and parcel with the lookout and observation deck are the two gun directors. In the forward area, you'll see we have the Mark 34 gun director, and that uh, directed our 6 inch 47 uh, caliber uh, turret with uh, three barrels and behind it is the Mark 37 which managed the dual uh, barreled 5 inch 38 that we had uh, on USS Little Rock. So down below also is the blockhouse which managed all of that equipment and translated all of the data into uh, readable bits for the sailors. And again, this is just aft of our observation deck, which you can see in full here. USS Slater is a privately owned, not-for-profit museum. We get no regular support from the federal government or state government. We also get no support from the U.S. Navy, mostly because we came from the Greek Navy. All of the money we make comes from generous donors just like you, uh, memberships, and any money we earn on ticket sales or merchandise sold goes directly back to the, res 
preservation and restoration of USS Slater. If you'd like to get involved, make sure you check out ussslater.org to make a donation, become a member, or just take a look at what's in our ship store. Thank you so much for watching. We appreciate your interest and support. If you have any questions about the compartments we saw today, or any others, go ahead and check them out on the virtual tour on our website, ussslater.org. And while you're there, make sure to hit that donate button. Thanks so much. Now to wrap up this video, we're saying goodbye uh, for now from the Admiral's Flag Plot Room. But for this video, we really appreciate working with Shanna and the USS Slater, USS Slater and the Buffalo Naval Park. Would love your support. Please like this video. Please subscribe to our channels. Please check us uh, for new videos coming up. And please feel free to leave comments down below of this video, and we'll do our best to answer them. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoyed this video.